In just a few minutes, I'm going to be leaving to pick up the latest project for the YouTube channel. I got the trusty old Wrangler hooked up to the trailer here. I swear this Wrangler has hauled more Willys Jeeps than any other Wrangler in the world. And I've got the pictures to prove it. But uh, we're going to kill two birds with one stone in this video. Number one, we're going to pick up the new project. Number two, we're going to test out the new fridge here. Both times that I've went out west uh, for Rubicon Trail and for Easter Jeep Safari, I really wish that I had one of these mobile cooler refrigerators in the back of the Wrangler because, I mean, nothing really lasts out there in the heat and it sucks having to stop at the gas station all the time just for a drink. And Set Power was kind enough to send us one. So this is the RV45D. I specifically picked this one because it does fit in the back of my Wrangler. So the nice thing about this thing, and I've got it hooked up here on the cord, so you can hook it up into a normal wall, or there's a car charger right here so you can plug it into your vehicle. Now this thing is all digital, so it's got two different climates in it. Right now I've got one side at 40 degrees, one side set at 35 degrees. Then you go to open it, and on the inside we've got a removable divider here that you can uh, move around, one side fridge, the other side for a freezer. Or you can have all fridge, all freezer, doesn't matter. One thing I do really like about this is that let's say you've got this in your vehicle, you want the digital display facing you, but this side's up against the wall. You can open up from over here, or if you got it on the other side of the vehicle, you can flip this around 180 and open it from the opposite side. This has been plugged in for about seven hours. Again, I've got 40 degrees and 35 degrees. I do have a laser gun that can read temperature, so we're gonna see what we have. So on this side, what do we got? 36.7, it's about 38, 41. Man, you can't beat that at all. We're only off about two degrees, which is insane. So we're gonna put this in the back of the Wrangler and see how it works on our trip. Man, you want to talk about a perfect fit. It can't get any better than this. Um, I'll go over what I carry in the back of my Wrangler. I always have a uh, first aid kit, just because you never know. Box of rags, because I tend to get dirty when I pick up Jeeps. You know, everything's greasy and grimy. Spare tire for my trailer. This is actually a battery for the Jeep we're going to pick up, because its battery is dead. And then I've got ratchet straps and uh, miscellaneous stuff down there. So this fridge actually fits in here really nice. In the cord, I've got a, a little outlet on the back here. I got a feeling that this is going to be one of those items that once you have it, you can't live without it. Alrighty, well it is time to go and pick up our new project. And just like that, we're back. Time to get this thing unloaded. Cold start on the snow plow Jeep. Put our neutral, trail cap way out. Runs like a champ. Turn the gear, and away we go. Alright, check this out. I didn't even realize it until after I got home. There's two different levers right here. This lever is our up and down of the blade. Super cool. Now the other lever is actually a power tilt. Look at that. Awesome. Alrighty, we're gonna we're gonna play a little bit of a game as we walk around this Jeep. Can you guess what model it is? There's some things that point to earlier model, some things that point to a later model, and even some to a Land Rover, I might add. Yeah, we were all probably wrong there. This is a 1953, I believe, Willie CJ3A. Now, you might be thinking, well, that's got a CJ5 front body on it. How the heck is it a 3A? And I thought the same thing until I started looking really closely at the ad. I bought this Jeep from the family that purchased it in about 1959. So this was a CJ3A they bought used from a Willys dealership somewhere out in Illinois. 
and the sole purpose of this Jeep was to make money with it. So the individual purchased it, installed the snow plow on it, and he would go up and down the uh, Chicagoland area snow plowing people's driveways, not charging a lot of money, but enough to justify the purchase of the Jeep, and used it for decades. At some point in this Jeep's life, maybe the body rotted out on it, probably because of the salt, and he purchased a CJ5 front clip here, and you'll notice we've got like a CJ5 or a CJ7 style grill. Now the hood, I believe, is actually out of like a truck or a wagon. We'll pop this open. And what leads me to say that is because it's pointed at the top, just like the trucks and wagons are. So this may be two different hoods welded together. I'm not quite sure but you can really see the original 3A cowl right here that they added on a bunch of sheet metal and Bondo to make it look seamless. I gotta say, even though it's not functional at all, I do kind of like the, uh, the solid sides right here. Obviously there's no door opening, but if you're a one man band just snow plowing, what's it matter, right? This F-134 is the only reason why I bought the Jeep actually. I saw this thing on Marketplace, really reasonable price. And I was like, man, this would be perfect, you know, because the body looked goofy in the pictures, but I knew it ran and drove, that I could take this body off of it and build my dream two buggy chassis wheelies. Essentially, if I had a running gear of an F-head engine and no body, I would mount some seats and a roll cage and just have a lot of fun with it off-road. But uh, the moment I saw this thing, I was like, man, I don't know if I can bring myself to it. Because the Jeep is a lot better in person than I thought it was in the pictures. Obviously the body is a little weird. But the snow plow, I was amazed. It's not only power up and down, but it's power tilt side to side. You'll see two different hydraulic cylinders on each side. There's one on each side. So it will pivot from the driver's seat of the Jeep, which is almost unheard of in this era. Now your Jeep may be cool, but it's not as gangster as I've got a vice on the back of my Jeep. Break down on the side of the road, come back here, pop open the vice, fix your parts. But my favorite component is the winch right here. This is a manual winch. Right here that is your lever for the winch. You can see that he drilled a hole through the side of the body. And you would come over here if you're ever stuck, put it in there and then winch the Jeep out of the snow pile that you probably just pushed. This thing would look really medieval on the front of a Jeep with a big old gear hanging out. Probably would block most of the grill. But um, yeah, my plan was with the two buggy, I could put this winch on the front, then a roll cage. Obviously the body would have to go, but the more I'm looking at it, the more I'm playing with it, it would just be a sin to turn this into that. It'll sell, if you will, to run the engine off of. And then he's got, you know, his reflectors and a toe strap and gloves and fire extinguisher. This thing was totally decked out for the job that he was doing. Check that out. Even the headlights still work. This is a bittersweet moment for me. On one hand, I don't get to do my project that I was dreaming of. But on the other hand, this plow jeep gets to live another day. And we'll take some great pictures and market it to somebody that can really get some good use out of it. Let's talk about the MVP that is a set power fridge. This thing actually came in handy in a way I wasn't expecting. I thought, well, you know, it'd be kind of nice to have a drink or whatnot. But my problem was I left so early in the morning to go by the Jeep that there were uh, no fast food places open around here. And I thought, well, I'll wait a few hours, things will open up. Well, I didn't think about when I went into Chicago area that um, the time zone kicks back an hour. So places that should have been open in my time zone, we're not open in Illinois. So luckily I came back here, popped this open, got my sandwich out of here, and we were good to go. Now I will say, I really like the size of this thing. I don't think I would want to go any bigger. Usually what I do when I'm camping is I will fold this side of the seats down and leave this side up. So I'll stack uh, extra Jeep parts or whatnot back here on this side and then I'll sleep on this side. And one of my favorite parts about this is uh, it doesn't stick out past that seat very much, so you still have plenty of room to sleep over here without this getting in your way. So it's a really nice feature about it. 
And then I did forget to talk about earlier, this thing does have a battery protection system built in. You can actually set it up so that when your battery voltage gets to a certain point, this will kick off. It will not drain your vehicle's battery if you accidentally leave it plugged in all day.